welcome to Lab Church. A uh, really, really warm welcome to you. So Emma really wanted to welcome you as well. A really warm welcome to you, particularly if you're new with us today. We would love to get to know you. And um, after the service, why don't you jump onto our website, lovechurch.org.uk. There's a really simple form you can fill out there. And one of the clergy team will be in touch as soon as we're able. A particular warm welcome to all the men out there today. We know it's Father's Day. We want to take this as an opportunity to celebrate and be thankful for all the men in our lives. Isn't it great that even though we're spread out across Bournemouth and maybe even further afield, we can come together online. We're so looking forward to this morning's service. And uh, forgive us, we didn't introduce ourselves. For those of you who don't know us, my name's Simon. Uh, I'm part of the team at Love Church. This is my amazing wife, Chloe, and these are our two kids, Benji, who's currently <laughs> picking his toenail, and uh, Emma, who is eating. Well, that's what she does. She's very good at that. I'm sorry, Benj was lifting his sock up. Never work with children or animals, isn't that what they say? Well, we have loved getting together over these, um, these weeks online. Don't get me wrong, I cannot wait until we can be back in buildings, having cups of coffee together and giving each other a hug. What a foreign concept that has become. But the team have been doing such a wonderful job in enabling us to worship Jesus, to hear from his word and to pray together. And that's exactly what we're going to do this morning, what we always do. Uh, we're going to sing our hearts out like we're all together. We're going to continue the series on prayer that we've been going through, and then we're going to practice that by praying together. But before we do that, just one quick notice. Check out this update on the internship scheme. At Love Church, we believe that everybody has a purpose for their life. And we are so passionate about helping people discover what this calling is. And one of the ways that we do this is through our internship program. And I'm so excited to say that from September, we will be relaunching our internship program. And what the internship is really, is it's a discipleship year. It's an opportunity if you wanna give a year of your life to invest in your relationship with Jesus. It's an opportunity to do that. And we pray and we hope that through a year with us, you'll grow more in love with the Lord. You'll grow more aware of who you are and your identity in Him. And hopefully you'll become more aware of what your purpose is. But don't take my word for it. Why don't you uh, hear a couple of the experiences that our interns this year have had? The internship has given me so many opportunities to develop and grow as a person. This year we've done the One Life Leadership course in which we have developed our understanding of what a young leader in Christ looks like. I've grown in self-belief and my confidence in what I am able to achieve has risen massively. I've also been reminded time and time again that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God and that I am a child who he loves dearly. I think I've relearned and been reminded again and again about how much God loves me and that it's just crazy. Um, and that God is so faithful and that he really does provide and want the best for me. And Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And watching um, people around me and the people in the church face everything with Christ's strength within them, um, has been something I've learned about myself that I can also face all things and can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And while you're doing that, you'll be serving in church. Throughout the years, our interns have served in lots of different areas of church life, whether that be worship or youth, students, kids. We've had catering interns, social action, uh, operations, there's an opportunity to do an internship with our mission partner Respect Ed, but this is by no means an exhaustive list. If there is an area of church life that you are passionate about, we'd love to hear from you and have a, have a chat about what an internship could look like for you. I think my favourite part of the internship has been um, just the opportunity for teaching and to learn more about the Bible and um, just go into theology because I've never learned about um, that kind of stuff before. Um, there has been so many opportunities to grow this year. Um, I think the first one that pops into my head is um, I got the chance to preach for the first time at youth on a Wednesday, um, which was definitely super challenging, um, but it felt so amazing to do it and 
um, yeah, just to receive feedback and you learn so much through um, that kind of thing because people can really just come alongside you and encourage you and um, help you do better for next time. During the internship, I've also got so many opportunities to grow. As a worship intern, I led worship in so many uh, different services on a Sunday and during the week as well at the 7 a.m. prayer meeting on Tuesday, um, the students on Thursday evening. It was just amazing to um, leave worship for so many different people and it made me grow as a worship leader, as a musician, but also as a person. There's been loads of opportunities for growth this year on the internship. We've had teaching every Monday and I've grown in self-awareness and leadership skills and depth of theology amongst other things. I've been able to put this straight into practice on the projects with Respected, uh, the mission partner of the church, and with the church too. We all have line leaders, we all have mentors, and people are willing to give us honest feedback. There's this general culture of trying and learning and being able to make mistakes. We will be investing in you as a leader. We want to give you space to grow and develop your leadership skills. You'll be given responsibility. We want to make sure that we are pushing you outside of your comfort zone so that you can continue to flourish into the leader that God is calling you to be. So if this sounds like something that you might be interested or you may know someone who might be interested in doing the internship with us, then head to our website www.lovechurch.org.uk forward slash internship for more information or if you would like to apply. We hope to hear from you soon. God bless. Stay safe. One of my highlights of each year that I've spent with Love Church is to see this amazing group of interns begin in September and grow throughout the year to begin to flourish and to thrive and to grow into their own giftings. And if you know someone that you think would be perfect for our internship scheme, can I encourage you to get them to apply sooner rather than later? One of my highlights every week uh, of the Love Church online services is hearing from a variety of different people throughout the family. And uh, we're going to continue that now in this week's Key Worker Chronicles. Hello, my name is Ron Jenkinson. I attend Love Church at the St. Swithin's site with my wife, Rachel. And when they're with us, our children, uh, Ella, Poppy and Sophie. Uh, Ella lives around the corner from St. Clement's now, um, but uh, Poppy and Sophie are at uni and uh, are with us at home um, because of the circumstances, which is lovely in that respect. Um, my key worker role is executive head teacher across two schools, although most of my work now falls uh, at uh, one school, at St Michael's Middle School in Wimborne, uh, and that uh, we take children from the ages of nine uh, up to 13, so a slightly different system. Uh, and normally we'd have 600 children uh, in school, young people, but uh, obviously at the moment that's different. We only have about 120, just numbers have been rising, uh, and, and uh, as a combination of, of different people. Uh, for different circumstances. Um, obviously our work has changed dramatically um, over the last few weeks, months, and um, we are trying to provide a, a thorough online system where uh, we're using uh, the technology available to us to, to provide access to learning. But at the same time, we've been trying to support and protect uh, many families who found themselves in really challenging situations, whether that's through um, food parcels, using our knowledge of, of which family needs support, working with the, uh, the food bank in Wimborne, uh, um, um, delivering resources, uh, materials, um, providing emotional well-being support, trying to link agencies. Uh, we've been working with closely with about 80 families um, in, in all sorts of different ways beyond um, just the standard delivery of, of, of curriculum online. Uh, so uh, adapting all of those things has been pretty hectic and, and obviously as a manager within um, uh, this uh, within education um, a particular focus of looking after and supporting my staff and trying to make sure that that like so many people at this time uh, adapting to the new expectations trying to, to, to manage their anxiety about their own health and the health of the people they love uh, and trying to make sure that, that we're keeping everybody safe. Um, so it's been a, a, well, as you can imagine, a full-on time. Uh, I'm just grateful for the support and prayers of, 
uh, of Love Church and if you can continue to pray for all those in education, uh, adapting to the pretty constant change of guidance and advice and support, uh, trying to keep people, particularly some really vulnerable people safe, we find ourselves uh, at, the, at the, the sharp end of that. Uh, so praying for all of that and the wisdom uh, for managers uh, as they make plans again, new plans, trying to work out what's right and looking after uh, and preparing for uh, September as well when we, we don't really know what's going to happen. So thank you very much for, for all the continued support that we get. Well, thank you so much for that. And let's keep remembering and praying for one another in this strange season. What we're gonna do now though is we're gonna worship the first foot forward, the song of eternity is worship. Let's join in with the praise of heaven. But before we do, can I just ask you, can I invite you to just still your hearts before Jesus again? Wherever you are, maybe you just wanna uh, just, just take some time to confess. You might have some stuff that you need to process before God in this moment, some heavy burdens, just lay those down before him. And Holy Spirit, we ask, would you come and fill us again? Lord, make us aware of your presence that is with us. We long to meet with you. We long to encounter you. We long to be known by you and loved by you. And Holy Spirit, we pray this morning, would you reveal Jesus to us again? Open the eyes of our heart to see him. And Lord, we ask, would you accept these songs as our sacrifice of praise, the love song of broken hearts that are grateful for all that you've done. We love you, Jesus, and this is all for you. Amen. Amen. Let's worship together. Broken hearts declare his praise For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah He's roaring with power and fighting our battles Every knee will bow before him Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world, His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him. Oh, 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 oh. So open up the gates, make way before the King. Comes to say, he is here to set the captives free. 
stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Who can stop the Lord?
never stop working You never stop, never stop working Cause even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Cause even when I
Thank you for my family and thank you for my friends and please help those in need and the homeless who need food to survive during this crisis of coronavirus. Amen. Um, dear Lord, we thank you. We thank you for being with us. Uh, we thank you for giving us strength during such difficult times. And, and we pray, Lord, we pray that uh, those who are still in isolation feeling lonely that that your presence be with them um, we also pray for for other countries which are as not not as privileged as we are here in, in the UK we pray for for the countries in Latin America we pray for countries in Africa who might not have the outstanding support that we get here from the NHS uh, from the police and and all the key workers during this crisis um, and, and it is a crisis um, I know sometimes that we, we, we try to think about the good things but if there is something good in all of this is um, how through your guidance we can reevaluate the way we treat each other the way we look after our neighbours the way we, we treat people who are different from us from, from different ethnicities, from different cultural backgrounds, and that we love each other in, in the same way as you taught us, in the same way as you, you loved everyone, Lord Jesus. Um, and thanks for everything. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Dear God, we thank you for your love, and we thank you for everything that you've done for us, even though we don't deserve any of this, we don't deserve the love so much by you. Um, 
you're such a good father god we thank you for that we thank you that we can feel your presence with us even though um we're going to through this troubled times um we thank you jesus for being in the boat with us not through the storm not just watching over us you are with us all the time and you're always bringing good news even though we can only see the bad news the bad things that are happening you're always with us and we thank you for your presence lord that's always always around um we ask you god that in your name we when we get through the final stages of this next phase and when we transition into easing lockdown even more we can find your presence with us still and we can bring your presence with us to our jobs and our schools and that we that we are a light god to to bring some kind of peace to the new world that we're about to face um we thank you god for everything that you've done and everything that you're about to do we thank you because you you are the same yesterday today and you will ever be the same thank you so much for everything in jesus name amen amen amen, amen to those wonderful prayers and what we're going to do now is we're going to hear from chris muir uh, with his wife, Hooch, they uh, host our 1030 service normally. So many of you will know and love those guys already. And Chris is one of our ordinands and he's going to be continuing our series in prayer. This week, looking at the topic of listening. So settle in, get comfortable wherever you are and get your notepad out to make some notes. And let's have a listen to what Chris has to bring this morning. Hello, Love Church, and welcome, welcome, and um, welcome to my bedroom floor. And you're instantly probably wondering what the heck I'm doing sat on my bedroom floor. Well, we are continuing our course, our sermon series on how to pray following Pete Gregg's material. And right here is a place where I come frequently to, to pray. I often sit here with my noise reducing headphones, my, uh, my Bible and my journal and a pen and sit to pray and listen to God. You see, God is a God of communication. One of my lecturers said to me once upon a time that uh, listening to God or, or, or praying is talking to the talkative God. What does it mean to listen to God? What does he say and, and how does he say it? He is the God who exists beyond existence. What's he got to say to little old me and to, and to little old you? If you've got your Bibles, do turn to Exodus uh, 33, 11. Um, in it, uh, you will see that God says, that it says, that the Lord would speak to Moses face to face as one speaks to a friend. What would it be like to hear God as you hear from a best friend? Or turn to Matthew 4, 4. Um, Jesus said that man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Jesus is saying that if we're not hearing from God, that we're somehow malnourished. Or right at the beginning of John chapter 10, uh, Jesus speaking of himself as the good shepherd says that us, his sheep, we, he calls us by name and, he, and we know his voice and we can discern his voice from the voices around us. How amazing that we get to know the voice of God. I have some news for you, it's good news. Uh, the good news is that I am nothing like God, or at least God is nothing like me. Um, a few days ago, out in the garden, back out there, uh, it was a day after a day of studying and, and who's just homeschooling, uh, I'd gone into the garden, I was firing up the barbecue, it's finally time to relax. And um, the kids are running in and out, it's, uh, it was just a, a nice sort of family evening. And as I'm getting the grill ready, Hooch comes up to me and she starts to unpack some stuff which is on her heart, starts uh, really opening up some, some, some pain that she's going through. And um, I, of course, took this opportunity to earn some brownie points. Why wouldn't you, okay? I know that she, I've got a bad rep as a, uh, as a bad listener. And so I thought, well, this is my opportunity to uh, listen to Hooch. I'm gonna hang on her every word. I'm gonna digest it and, uh, and uh, see where it takes us. 
And so I did it. I did an amazing job of just listening to every single word that came from her. I was attentive. I gave the odd nod, the occasional mm-hmm sort of sound. And, uh, and I think I did an amazing job. I didn't say a word. I didn't interrupt her once. And there, friends, was my error. Who knew that she wanted to have some dialogue with me? I've made some notes. I'm gonna I'm gonna amend that for next time. Um, but have you noticed how culture is totally geared around communication, towards speaking and getting our message across? It's, it's always been like this, from the ancient Greeks, uh, Aristotle, through to the philosophers and, and Shakespeare, right the way up to TED talks and 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 podcasts. We love we love it when people speak and communicate well to us. We say that someone's got the gift of the gab or that we could listen to them all day long. We just admire great communicators. But what about listening? How many of us are taught to listen well to each other, let alone listen to God? What does it feel like to be deeply listened to? Hooch didn't feel listened to the other day out in the garden with me. Uh, She wanted to... Um, uh, to, to communicate with me instead of me just absorbing information. She wanted me to uh, not just hear her words, but feel and, and understand her story, her emotion, to be impacted by the story to the point of empathy. So it would be, so I would be changed by the encounter of that, that moment of connection. So you know when you've been listened to, when something of your story has moved and deeply impacted the other person. You know when you've been listened to, when you've had an attentive friend, not judging, just asking, just listening, just being with you. So this leads me to my first point. We listen to God like we are listening to a friend. In uh, in John 13, there's this beautiful scene uh, where the gospel writer, probably speaking of himself, he speaks of the disciple whom Jesus loved. And this uh, they're, they're, rec- they're at a dinner table, they're reclining, and this disciple whom Jesus loved is just so affirmed in his uh, relationship with Jesus, his friendship with Jesus, that he is resting his head on Jesus' chest at the table. Can you imagine? Can you be imagine being so secure in your friendship with Jesus that you're there listening to the very heartbeat of God? It gives me goose pimps, pimples just thinking about it. Um, see, as we become Christians, we begin a lifelong friendship with Jesus, listening not just to his words that he speaks, but each day drawing closer and closer to him, closer and closer to his heartbeat hearing not just the words, but the very rhythm and sounds of heaven. How is God, what is he communicating to us? Well, this leads me to point two. We listen to God as he guides us. God promises to guide us. Psalm 32, 8 says this. It says, I will instruct you and teach you in the ways you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. There was this one time uh, when Hooch, my wife, was offered uh, two jobs. I keep speaking about Hooch. Maybe I should uh, ask her permission. Oh, I'm joking. I've got it. Um, uh, For the two jobs, one was working uh, to be trained as a youth pastor for an old church we were at. Uh, It meant a very low salary and also self-funding a course at Bible College. But it was a dream job. Um, It would have meant being particularly skint for a number of years. The other job she was offered uh, was a better paid um, a job there was no there was no expenditure and it was also working with youth it was for a charity some of you guys may know it it was called the Sup- the shine project still going and uh, we were both torn and seeking God's guidance on this and as we were deliberating and praying I was actually reading the story of Abraham and Isaac in my bible um, the story uh, where Abraham is um, obeying God and in, his, in, in obeying God, he is ready. He is ready to sacrifice his son for God. Um, and the point comes when he's going to sacrifice his son. And thank, thank the Lord. The Lord provides an alternative uh, sacrifice. He doesn't have to do it. If you ever hear God telling you to sacrifice your children, don't do it. Okay, That's an ancient narrative. It's not a call to action. 
Anyway, so Hooch and I, um, we re I read this story, we spoke about it, and we made a decision to hand it over to God to be obedient and to make the sacrifice and to take the, the dream job with the lower paid salary. Went to bed a little bit shaky, uh, but in the morning God spoke to us and um, he spoke to us as the alarm clock went off. Yet yeah, the radio clicked in and the BBC One radio presenter said to us, I remember his words, he said, and now take that with shine. And Hooch and I just looked at each other. This thing had been so big. And we knew that God was using a BBC Radio 1 presenter and take that to speak to us. And uh, she took the job. She took the job with Shine and she had three amazing years working for that project and uh, working with teenage girls. So God uh, communicates to guide us. And then point three, we listen to God as he communicates his love to us. Zephaniah 3.17 says this, the Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. He will take delight in you. In his love, he will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with singing. I have a friend who will remain nameless. Uh, he heard from God as he ate a cheese toasty at Focus. True story, he was hungry. He went to the cheese toasty van, picked up a sourdough cheese toasty. Absolutely beautiful. If you've been to Focus, you know them. Um, he stepped into the main tent, toasty in hand, uh, into the worship. And within moments, he had tears of joy streaming down his face and uh, this, this beaming grin. I asked him what was going on. And he said as he was, as he was delighting in this cheese toasty, God was just saying that he delights in him and has good things for him in life. God spoke to him using a cheese toasty, which leads me to point number four. We listen to God in, by his many voices. We listen to God by his many voices. Uh, very recently, I listened to ha the beginning of Handel's Messiah. I'm not a muso, uh, but I was drawn to this piece. And as I was listening, I was seriously sucked into each and every instrument, the harmonies, the melodies, the, the change in styles and rhythms. It was beautiful and dynamic with layers and textures of, of sound and emotion. I was drawn into the many pieces of the work and it struck me as I listened. <laughs> Maybe I heard God. But as we grow in our friendship with Jesus, as we enjoy his company more and we spend time with him, we begin to hear and see the many different ways that he communicates to us. We become more sensitive to this sort of sound, the symphony of heaven, which is all around us. Now, it could be that God, excuse me, chooses to use a Take That song or a, or a Cheese Toasty or a Radio 1 presenter. But, and he could do, he could use those. He is the God of the universe. He has the whole universe at his disposal to talk to you through. But it is more, there are some more common ways. There are some common ways which uh, he does speak to us more frequently. And I wanted to ask you guys, uh, how God is speaking to you. So I popped this up on my social media and I asked you uh, how God speaks to you. And these are some of the replies. And one person said, Bible and sermons. This is a really reoccurring theme. Bible and sermons pretty much came up the most popular way of God speaking to them. Knowing the scriptures, this, this primary source of the knowledge of God, spending time reading it and, and digesting it, meditating on it, has to be the number way that God speaks to us. God has used the scriptures to speak to his people for um, thousands of years. So guys, go and get into this book. If you don't do it, do it, get into it, chew it and wrestle over it. Um, 2 Timothy 3.16 says that all scripture is God-breathed and used for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness. Love this book. And then this preaching, uh, listening to those who have been gifted by the Holy Spirit to teach us. Um, preaching when done well, probably unlike this talk, um, is a collaboration of a gifted speaker, uh, scripture, life and the Holy Spirit. Uh, when done well, they will, they will come together, all of those units, and they will impact us and they will challenge us to live lives which are more and more aligned with Jesus. Preaching definitely is used by God. Uh, somebody wrote through being calm and he speaks to my heart uh, alongside someone else who wrote, when I shut up, he speaks 
Absolutely, I couldn't agree more. Um, this again was a, a, a resounding theme, the need to slow down, calm down, quiet down to listen to God. As I said before at the beginning, I, I often sit and pray with my noise reducing headphones to, to cut out the hubbub of around me. I, I get up before the kids are up, before the traffic starts, or I sit here on my bedroom floor and I pray and I just make sure I'm not distracted and I can just focus on the Bible, on, on my praying. Um, somebody wrote, being outside, giving feelings of stillness and peace. Absolutely, yes. Creation is a great place to hear from God. Why would he not use his beautiful creation to speak to us? I'm often inspired in my thinking and my prayers as I'm out for a run or a dog walk or a bike ride, um, definitely get outside and be inspired by his creation. Quite a few, few people wrote about God speaking through circumstances and through close counsel. Absolutely, yes, God can and does use our circumstances. Um, maybe you're in a situation where the doors are closing on a job or, or, or a friendship. Um, is the Holy Spirit doing that? Uh, is he pulling you away from something that uh, isn't healthy for you or has got something better for you? Um, absolutely, God can use our circumstances. But with that, he will also use godly people. So we would test maybe what we have, uh, 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 the situation, we will run it by godly people, maybe in our connect group or prayer partners. How are their words impacting you? How are they speaking into your life, they will be gently used by God to form you into the person you're called to be. Uh, one person said, when I'm not expecting it, uh, through words of others, observations in life, and reaffirmed in something I have read or heard in a preach. This is the reaffirmation point, and it's so important. We must test everything that we've heard, especially if it involves a significant decision in life. Um, so again, testing uh, by prayer partners or, or, or those close to us as godly people, waiting to see sometimes if God speaks again. So I know one person who waits until they've had three clear like, messages from God before they, they act upon something. Someone simply wrote, uh, when I hear his still, small voice. You see, friends, God hardly ever, if ever, writes it in the sky for us. Elijah went to listen for God's voice in a storm and it wasn't there. He tried to hear it in an earthquake and it wasn't there. He listened for it in a fire, still no voice. You see, Elijah only heard the voice in the stillness, the quiet whisper that followed those. And I think it's because God, God whispers to us because he wants to draw us closer to him. He wants to draw us closer to his heartbeat. Um, two absolute ninjas at hearing from God, the, the Peggies, if you like, from our church. They're the Peggies, which Pete Gregg spoke about a couple of weeks ago with Tim. They wrote to me privately. Both of them, both of them really agreeing in, in how they hear from God. Both of them saying in a way, one way or another, that they both find it hard and easy to hear from God. That it takes time and we must be attentive. Um, one spoke of hearing God in the everyday things, the, the dog walking, the washing the dishes. And the other said that she, she positions herself in stillness and quietness before the Lord. Both, both were explicit about the place of the Bible in hearing from God. These two giants, in my opinion, of, of faith and friendship with Jesus. So I have to ask, how do we, how do I, how do we become like the Peggies? How do we get up close and personal with Jesus? How do we hear that heartbeat of heaven, that divine symphony? Well, we simply do the things that the Peggies have been doing. We form friendship with Jesus. We do the things that he did, the things that the giants of the faith have done before us. Um, these are tried and tested. It's not rocket science. We pray regularly. We take time for silence and solitude. We simplify our lives so that we can um, give space for God to speak to us. We know the scriptures, uh, which means reading and studying them. 
we fast, and my goodness, I need to reintroduce fasting into my life. We slow down, we Sabbath, we rest, we, we take on posture of, of humility and servitude. You see, friends, Jesus is always the model, always. And I've said it one or two times through the talk this morning, today, uh, that God speaks primarily through the Bible. So I want to set a challenge for the week ahead, uh, building upon size challenge from last week of, of contemplative prayer, uh, keeping that in place. If you didn't hear size talk, do go back and, and watch it and, and try putting in some of that practice of, of, of contemplative resting in God's presence. But I want us to try, in addition, some of the church calls Lectio Divina. Lectio Divina simply means um, uh, divine reading. It sounds swanky, it's not. It's really simple. It's a way of praying through a small part of scripture. Lectio Divina will help us to meditate and contemplate on scripture, uh, allowing the Holy Spirit to form us. Now, I would show you my phone, but I'm currently recording on it. I've got two apps which help me with Lectio Divina, and I recommend them both to you. Try them both out, see which one uh, works best with you. They both take around about 10 to 15 minutes a day. All you need to do is download it, hit the play button, and let the narrator take you through the devotional, the scripture, and the meditation. It's so, so simple. The first app, details on the screen, Lectio 365. Now we've mentioned this one before. It's hosted by Pete Gregg uh, and his team, and it often focuses on a hot topic, a current affairs, and uses scripture to help us reflect through that. This week, there was a fantastic reflection using uh, Philippians 2, um, focused on the I Can't Breathe movement. It was absolutely superb. The other app is my favorite app, Pray As You Go. It's a little more traditional, it's hosted by uh, Jesuit experts in the Ignatian tradition. Again, that sounds swanky, but it's not. These are just uh, people who have just devoted their lives to hearing God through Scripture, allowing the Holy Spirit to form them. Um, it's beautiful and very calming. So pray as you go. Details on the screen. Both of these apps will help you in your uh, awareness of Jesus in your life. They will help you to listen to him through scripture. They will help you to grow mm. in your friendship. And over time, you will learn to do these things without an app. It will become part of your life. So that's the challenge. Download them, set aside uh, 15 minutes a day on top of the contemplative uh, uh, um, stuff which I spoke about. Grab a coffee and get listening to God. Love you guys, miss you all, God bless. Oh! Uh -huh.
keep you Make his face shine upon you And be gracious to you The Lord turn his face toward you And give you peace Come on, let's lift this up, amen Oh, yeah. 
his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you. for joining us this morning we hope that you've been blessed and we hope that you have met with Jesus um, we know it's a funny time but we are praying for you and we are thinking about you we miss you all loads and we can't wait to be back with you sometime soon remember to check out the midweek content and have a fantastic week you said bye-bye bye, -bye. bye. 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 We hope you'll really enjoy Love Church Online. It really helps us if you subscribe on YouTube, like us on Facebook, share the material, comment on it. I love reading the comments. And um, if this is your first time with us online, then we'd love to actually properly connect with you and to be able to say hi to you in person. Um, on the church website, which is at lovechurch.org.uk, you can find out a lot more about us, about the ministries of the church, and how you can join in with some of the things that are going on, including our connect groups, which are meeting online at the moment, but dotted around the whole of our local area. And if you'd like to know more about our story, you can get this book, Love Church, Join the Adventure of Hope from Amazon and other good bookstores. If it's part of your normal practice to worship by giving financially to the church, then please come on over to the website uh, where you can make a one-off donation or set up a monthly standing order uh, to give. That's what we do. Many members uh, of our church do so. And we can't imagine that not being part of our life with God. Debs and I, we've never regretted it. It's a core part of our faith. And it's opened the door to a huge amount of God's blessing in our lives. So we commend that to you. Also on the website, you can get involved in our church response to the COVID-19 crisis, including the Love Your Neighbour initiative, one part of which is delivering food parcels to those who need that level of help. But there's other ways we can be helping as well. On there, you can offer help to others if you're in a mm. position to offer it, and you can ask for help as well if you need it. And may I encourage you that if you've got a need, however big or small, that you let us know so we can come alongside you as part of a church community and help you practically as well as pray for you. Finally, I'll be on Facebook straight after this service. I'd love to chat about anything you'd like to raise and we'll also celebrate communion together. So why not grab a coffee and head on over to Facebook. Come and say hi. God bless you and keep you and see you again next time. Bye. Bye.